here's the deal, you guys. First of all, we are, many of you are service providers. Many of you um, are doing work that does require time. So, and many of us weren't, you know, really trained to be a business owner or trained to really run a business. So the truth is a lot of us are doing things that are draining our time, draining our energy, costing us money, um, making us maybe a little bit crazy without even realizing it. I'm sure you can understand or relate to that. And I just wanted to remind you guys, um, one, the reason that I'm doing this topic is because my Facebook community voted on it. So first of all, make sure that you're in my Facebook community at nicolaloy.com slash community and make sure you're signed up for my breakthrough busy five day challenge next week. The number one thing I hear from people is that they are busy. Um, and they're often busy on the wrong tasks. And that is often why they are not investing in their growth. Um, that is why they often delay working with me and as a result, bury themselves in more work. And truthfully, or they try to pile on extra income streams on their own and they don't have a good foundation for it. So next week, I'm actually gonna take you through five days of templates, videos, um, really awesome stuff. It'll take about 30 minutes a day for my Breakthrough Busy Challenge. And it is gonna be, just an amazing way to really take things to the next level um, and really make sure that you are not, you're getting organized, you're getting unstuck, and you're not staying at an income plateau, right? But today we're going to cover why it's important to only work in the areas you're good at, how to increase your prices so you're not losing money, a sneak peek at my RSO system, which will change your life and business, and the topic I hate to talk about, but everyone loves, passive income. So listen, let's be real. Why do you want to earn more while working less, right? You can scale your business and serve more people. So many of us, we really just start out, we just wanna do our own thing. We don't like corporate, we don't like nonprofits, we don't like the work world, or we just wanna do more of the work we love. Um, but what happens is the business piece ends up taking over and we struggle, right? And we wanna help more people and we wanna serve more people. And then we actually, you know, want to be paid for it, paid well. And we know that, you know, money can, can help more people and we could do more good with more money. So, you know, when you're able to earn more while working less, you have more time for those fun projects. You have more time for family. You have more time for friends. You know, um, I was able to go to Mexico for two weeks. I was able to come back and, and spend Sunday, you know, with my nephews. Um, I'm not stressed all the time. You know, a few years ago before I started really using these systems, I was just like paralyzed and working nonstop, like nonstop. I would go to my desk at 8 a.m. and I would leave it at 10 p.m. Um, and I would dream about work. So, you know, I still dream about work and I still work because I love it, but it's not, I'm not working on the wrong activities. And also you have more opportunities for multiple income streams when you free up your time. You're not going to be trapped in that dollars per hour method, right? So now I know you guys want to know, how can you make this happen, right? And for those of you who are on, I'd love for you to drop a note in the comments and just let me know, like, do you feel like, are you happy with your work-life balance? What is currently taking up the most time in your week? Like, what should work activities? Most people say clients and content. Um, so first thing you need to do is you need to identify the money and mindset blocks that prevent this from happening, that prevent earning more while working less from happening and cause you to overwork yourself, right? Who has money and mindset blocks in this area? Who believes work needs to be hard? Here's the thing. A lot of us work hard, do hard work, do things we don't like because we believe we're supposed to be uncomfortable in order to make money. Some of this just comes from old family beliefs, things your parents did, right? Um, maybe your father or mom overworked a lot, right? Maybe they complained about work all the time and that is just a natural extension to you. Um, and now you feel like, you know, work shouldn't be easy, right? Um, you feel like it's wrong to make money in an easy way. Maybe you feel that you're cheating the system. I know that um, there's, um, like I've, I've sold courses before and just passive courses, right? Um, 
actually, it's very funny. I've had it set up. I've had a low cost course for $27 set up as a tripwire. And truthfully, I, I've actually turned it off, but it's still stuck in there somewhere. People get it once in a while. We cannot figure out where and buy it. Somebody just bought it last week. And, um, it feels so uncomfortable to me sometimes when I get that money, right? Like pop, I get a, no a Stripe notification, $27. And I'm like, should I contact this person? Should I give them a free session? What should I do? What if they don't use this, this content? What if, what if they don't, whatever, you know what I mean? It's so funny. Like, you know, it feels wrong to make money in an easy way. It feels wrong to make money that I'm not, um, giving lots of time for, you know, and it doesn't feel that way so much to me anymore, but it used to feel that way. So there's a good chance you're blocking income opportunities that aren't hard work from coming to you if you feel that way. Um, some people also believe like I have to work more to make more money. I have to double my work hours if I want to double my income. And I'm going to tell you guys that is not true. Many of my clients, um, one of my clients last year actually doubled her profit, right? We're just talking about profit, not total income. She doubled her profit, her highest amount of profit. Her highest amount of profit had been $5,000 in one month. She doubled it in, in another month, right? Like she had $10,000 of profit in that month. Um, and guess what, you guys? She worked less that month. She had less client hours. She worked less. So here's the thing. And she's like astounded and she's still astounded. This just happened to her again. We've been working for a while. She did my mastermind. Um, and now she does one-to-one -one with me. And she's like, you know, I felt this month was really bad. I felt February was really low. And then I looked at the numbers this February compared to last February. And I made more money and I worked less. So this is a real thing, you guys. This is a real thing right? When you are really making sure that um, you have the systems and processes in place that we're going to go through more of, you know, you start to see you don't have to work more to make more money. And I myself know that every year my income increases and I probably work less every year. Um, I already have a good chunk of income worked out. And because um, it was like my down period, I've barely worked the past couple of months. Um, now I'm filling my mastermind. I'm going to be doing that, which I'm so freaking excited for to be quite honest but um you know i haven't worked that hard and that means i'm in a great energy and i can now go in and support my clients and give better services and give better support to them so the other thing is you know sometimes we have beliefs like i'm just not good enough right i'm not good enough to do that i'm not smart enough to figure this out um things like that can happen um, and I think it's really important to kind of just be aware of that, right? And make sure that you are really, um, you know, not, not in that state where it is, I'm not good enough to make more money. Now, here's one of the things to start to make this easier. Work only in your zone of genius, right? Here's the thing we're all good at things and we're all bad at things, right? Whatever they are, they're different for all of us. Now, one of the things that happens, and I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the zone of genius. Um, this is in a book by Gay Hendricks, right? Um, and he talks about working in your zone of genius where you're really at your best and you feel amazing, right? When you can do that, your work is a lot easier. Um, so to get into the zone of genius, you have to do the work you love, right? I, you guys, now listen, I'm not saying don't do anything that feels hard. This is really important because I see a lot of people avoid hard stuff, scary stuff. That's what I mean by hard, scary stuff, right? They avoid the networking. They avoid the marketing, right? And I get it. You don't, you don't like that yet or it's scary to you, but right away, like you're like, I don't love this, right? Um, so I'm not going to do it. But a lot of times you've never even tried or developed it. Um, you know, so I think that's really important to know, like, look at, are you doing the work you love? Are you allowing yourself to try things that are scary? Are you building a story that you don't like stuff, right? Um, do the work you're good at too, right? Like I am not good at website tweaks or website design. I am not good at creating handouts, you know, for the challenge next week, I'm not touching the handouts, right? I sort of created the content and now my VA is designing them and, and making them, um, you know, fillable and all that yucky stuff that really, to be quite honest, I could do three hours of work with clients, um, 
during the time that it would take me to fix one worksheet, right? So you have to really let go of some of the other stuff, right? You have to let go of some of the other stuff. And, you know, it is a process. And look, there are sometimes going to be things that, um, you have to do to do the work you love, you know, tech stuff and that kind of thing, not worth it. Sales worth it. Right. Um, and we're going to get into that a little bit more, but you know, it really is about time to, um, let go of, of things you don't love. So I'd love to know something, um, something that is your zone of genius, right? If you could drop it in the box, what is something that is your zone of genius? What is something that you are really good at? What is something that, um, you know, you really love to do with your work, right? Um, that you want to keep doing and that, that really makes you feel good and, and feel, um, it feel really, um, good in that area. Um, so I think start to look at those things. Now, the next thing that we're going to talk about is using my RSO system, right? Because we said, let go of the other stuff. And you're probably like, how do I let go of the stuff, right? How do I let go of the tech stuff? How do I let go of, um, you know, some of the, the marketing pieces? How can I make it easier? And um, this is my RSO system that I have developed. Um, and this is... The first piece is remove, right? What do you need to remove? What are you doing that just doesn't need to be done anymore? That isn't, isn't um, actually helpful. Are you on Twitter? Are you sharing things on Twitter? And has it never worked for you? Has it never gotten you any clients? Is it, is your audience even there? Is that just something you think you should do? Right? Um, are you signing up for constantly, uh, constantly signing up for courses and never utilizing them? And that's not the best way for you to get support in your business or take things to the next level. What can you remove? Right? Um, and removing means like, these are the tasks that actually shouldn't even be in your business that don't need to be done for it to happen, right? Um, and then there's systematizing, right? And this includes things that can be batched, out or automated, things like that, right? How can you systematize certain things, right? If you don't love content, don't make sure, make sure that you're not making it so you need to do content every day. Make sure that you have a couple days where you're creating content, you're batching that content, you're creating it, and then you're scheduling it, right? So it's automated, it's scheduled to go out. Um, you know, make sure that, you know, just like me for these workshop Wednesdays, although we had a little bit of a fail today for those of you who missed it earlier, the link wasn't working because for some reason I have, you know, I have this, I have this workshop every week. So I have it recurring in Zoom webinar. So the link is the same all the time. Um, my email is basically the same every time I duplicate the email and just edit. So you guys know what today's topic is about and it goes out. Um, all of that is the same, right? All of that is the same. Everything is systematized. There's little things that need to be edited. Some of it's automated, right? I could schedule the emails out. Like if I knew the topics for the next few weeks, I could schedule the emails out. Right. Um, and have them already and have that automated. So systematizing things really keeps things um, easier. Um, it really, it really does make things easier. It really does make things, um, you know, it saves you time. And this is what you need to be doing. You need to be looking at all your tasks. By the way, you guys, make sure you are signed up for Breakthrough Busy, because I actually, one of the days, I'm not gonna tell you which, um, is all about the RSO system. And this is super, super, super important because most people don't see the things that could be removed, systematized, or outsourced in their business. So we're gonna be going through it together. Um, you're going to be able to get some ideas on this. Um, but you know, once again, if you want to be making more money, you need to be out like removing things, systematizing things and outsourcing things. Um, it's just, it is really, really important. Um, I really care about you guys. I don't want you getting burnt out. I don't want you hating your business. I don't want you worrying about your business being able to survive. I don't want your business feeling like a struggle. So these are things that you could do. Then the third step of course is outsource unless you're me and lazy and you try to outsource first. <laughs> um, but it really is going through all the tasks in your business and saying, can this be removed? Can this be systematized? Can this be outsourced? Now outsourcing means having someone that you're giving projects to. You can have someone, I have two people on my team now 
I have a project manager who does a lot of the tech stuff. And then I have an admin who's doing, helping me with a lot of the customer service stuff. And hopefully, um, you know, we'll have less errors like the one that I caused at the start when the link didn't work. But here's the deal, you guys, outsourcing, right? Like for me to outsource a task for $25 an hour makes more sense so that I could free up my time and market and sign on my clients for higher level packages or for my mastermind and things like that, right? And I can serve my clients better. I can do that work and I don't have to worry about the other work that can be outsourced and save me money. It is, outsourcing saves you money, honestly. It really does. Um, and I see people obsess over this with them for months, right? Like try to do things, waste hours, weeks. Have you ever done that? I have. Um, I don't do it often to be quite honest because I am lazy and I, I get rid of stuff quickly and that's what's allowed me to scale. That's what's allowed me to, you know, have a business that's grossed multiple six figures, you know, it's because I'm not trying to do everything. And you guys, I started outsourcing. I always hear, well, I don't have money. I started outsourcing. My business was barely making money. I started outsourcing things that were going to help make me money. Um, I created a book. I outsourced the cover. I outsourced the tech piece of getting it set up for Kindle, right? I outsourced that stuff. It cost me a little bit of money. And you know, then that book was out there and was selling copies, um, making me money quicker not as many copies as I would have liked. But so those are things that you can absolutely do um, to make sure that you are, um, you are, you are absolutely, you know, getting your business to the next level. So the next thing is focus on money making activities. This is huge, right? And this is the thing. That's what you're going to start to see. Too much of your focus is going back and forth to scheduling people and, and figuring out scheduling instead of having an automatic scheduling. Too much of your, of your time is going to tech issues. Too much of your time is going to content. I see people don't have good strategic content plans. They're creating content and it doesn't lead to anything it doesn't it's not making you money it's not setting you up with clients and you're wasting hours each week on this right has that ever happened to you um this is really super important you have to focus on the money making activities right so let's go into that a little bit further you need to rso on everything else right you need to remove systematize outsource you need to use that system on everything else right um sales marketing relationships those are the money making activities. Now, listen, you notice I'm not saying like client delivery. Of course, that's a money making activity, but that thing, that you guys always prioritize, you know what I mean? And then all this stuff goes, goes up in flame sales, marketing and relationships. Why do I have relationships on that there? Because in 2019 relationships is the key marketing strategy. I'm seeing that myself, right? I'm working on relationships. I'm bringing that back into the mix. Um, you know, that leads to sales and that leads to marketing opportunities. Opportunities. These needs to, these are the things I, this is what I see deprioritize marketing and relationships and building relationships. I see people leave that on the bottom list. They didn't get around to it. What do they do? They tweak their website for an hour. That is not going to make you money. The marketing and relationships are going to make you money. And I think here's the thing, you guys, I know people want to help more people. I know you want to help more people. I want to help more people. What I found, and I come from the nonprofit world. So believe me, like you can't help people if you're not profitable. You can't build your, you need to build your audience. You need to serve more people. You know what? I'm profitable and I focus on building my audience, right? I focus on those relationships. And as a result, I have thousands of people on my list. I have, um, I'm able to help them even if they're not ready to pay to work with me. You know, they're coming to my free workshops they're coming to my free trainings they are signed up for my challenge. Like I'm able to have a bigger impact because I have a profitable business that allows me to do that. So definitely just really keep that in mind. You have have to be, um, you know, you have to be, you know, doing all of that, right? Sales, marketing, relationships, you have to be focusing on the money making activities, right? Um, this is really, really important. Okay. Um, so then let's do it. Let's talk about passive income. If you want to earn more money while making less, right? 
let's talk about passive income. Um, who has some passive income questions? Now, here's the deal, you guys. I always, I don't love talking about passive income, which is so ironic as a multiple income streams expert. And that's because I'm seeing a lot of people throwing out passive income into the mix. Like, hey, you need passive income people. And you do, but like, it needs to be brought into your business in the right way. And it needs to not be relied on in, as an instant source of income. This is something that is very, very, um, really has to, you have to be cautious about and you have to be building that audience. So once again, you need to make sure that you are building towards passive income so that you can earn less, but it's not going to be an overnight thing unless you have like a huge audience already, right? You need to be building your audience. You need to be knowing what they want. Um, but I do think, honestly, I've been very lucky with passive income. I do have passive income in my business, several thousand dollars per year. And a lot of the passive income is coming from affiliate opportunities, to be quite honest. That is some of the easiest passive income. Courses, people love to list courses up as passive income, but they take a lot of setup work. And I'm telling you this because I want to make sure that you are setting yourself up for the right passive income, right? Um, I want to make sure that you are setting yourself up for the right, um, the right possibilities. Um, I want to make sure that you're setting yourself up for actual profit and not where you think like that it is going to um, lead to something and it doesn't. This is really, really important. Um, because once again, people think like, oh, I'm just going to create a course and then put it on my website and sell it. And I've seen people have major income loss and course failures, wasted time where they are creating courses. They haven't built up an audience. They don't know what their audience likes. And then they're trying to sell it and they're not selling anything. And they've spent a lot of money and time putting that course together. Um, and I'm seeing people out there talking about passive income who don't even have passive income set up, right? So I really want you to think about, you know, do you have the strong foundation? Start, start setting it up, right? That's where sales, marketing, and relationship comes up, comes together. Make sure you're building your list. I have lots of freebie. I have a freebie for you in training on list building. That is something you need to be working into your calendar every week. Now people are like, I'm too busy with clients to create a list. You can't be, you have to make room for it. Right. Um, so just remember that you have to make room for it and you have to have a strong foundation for it. Meaning you need to be building your audience. You need to be, you know, clear on what problem you solve for people. You need to make sure that you are standing out. Um, and look for those recurring opportunities. Um, once again, where can you have recurring revenue, right? Where can you have things set? Like that's what I feel is passive also are things that are recurring. So for example, um, I love ConvertKit for my email system. Um, I encourage people to sign up for it and that is a recurring opportunity because they're using it every month and I get a payment every month and it's passive. Um, some of my clients too, they, they think about resources and tools for their clients. So one of my clients, um, is in the health and wellness world and, um, she does things like she makes recommendations on like vitamins and supplements. So clients can buy through her links. Those, those are something that they're going to buy again and again and again, that is recurring and pretty passive, right? Um, and you have to remember the time cost with passive income. And I think a lot of people don't work that in. They think it's going to be quick and you do need to put time in to really set up that strong foundation and to really long-term make sure that you are building your audience, right? Um, and all of these things, all of these how to earn more while making less is really about one thing, making sure you're bringing in a steady stream of leads for multiple income streams. And I say this because multiple income streams is really key to security, foundation, growth, wealth, abundance. Um, I don't know any business owner who is wealthy and abundant on just one, one income stream. I could think of several who it looks like they are, but behind the scenes, they are doing the passive income. They're doing affiliate income, right? And they're also automating and systematizing and outsourcing things. Um, this is the reality of the further ahead businesses that you are not seeing the behind the scenes of even my business, right? I mean, I'm pretty transparent and talk about these things often, like my laziness, um, and my team, but you know, 
here's the deal. The team has helped me grow. Right. And you know, there was a scary investment period when I had to, so, uh, like get strategy or get a team. Right. And that was a dip before my income increase, um, continue to increase. Right. So once again, make sure you're thinking about, you know, am I bringing in a steady stream of leads for multiple income streams? You know, that is what's going to help you earn more while working less. Right. Um, that's, what's going to set you up for the passive income. That's what's going to set you up for the money making activities, all of those things. So, you know, once again, what happens when you use these strategies, you earn more while making less, you're able to help more people and you have more time for family, friends, travel and Netflix. If you're like me and you love TV, right? And it's like, you can actually enjoy the Netflix. It's not this like energy drain or avoidance technique, but you know, just to kind of cover again, really quickly, what we went over today, the strategies to earn more while making less are, um, one, your money mindset blocks. What do you believe about actually being able to do that? Do you believe it's possible Two, zone of genius? Stop trying to learn everything. Solopreneurs are not always one people shows, right? You guys, people who bootstrap, people who DIY, it takes them a lot more time for growth. One of my clients was like, I'm always a DIYer. I, I was scared to sign up with Nicole, but now I now that I did, you know, I know what works and I can get things done quicker. Um, she literally said that on her testimonial. And it just is true, right? It's scary when you're a DIYer to want it, to invest in other things. Like, you know, and sometimes you need to invest in the strategy piece for first so that you can make sure you really have the strong foundation to out source to systematize to um like remove things right you want to make sure you're doing it in the right order sometimes we don't always have the best the best um view of that um so once again the rso system remove systematize outsource um it is life-changing and then focus on the money making activities right making sure that you have time in every in your schedule every week i see people do this all the time they remove the relationships they remove the marketing piece um and they're behind the scenes maybe like just or maybe they're like doing marketing but it's not marketing that works they're creating 80 images for instagram and they're not really even engaging or using using instagram as a marketing so they're just posting and then complaining about people not liking their posts right those are not the good things you have to really look at what's working and you have to get an idea of what's working for your personality what works for me isn't going to work for everybody but i will tell you that you know i keep stressing the relationship piece that's something that you need to be focusing on in 2019 my clients who are doing it are getting awesome results um and passive income so passive income is good but it needs to be done in the right way. It's not an overnight technique to greatly increase your income. You need to be working it into your other income streams and making sure it has a foundation. So what are the next steps for success, right? What are the next steps for um, getting things to the next level? Um, this is really important. And the first step is get on the list for the breakthrough busy challenge um, at nicolegalloy.com slash breakthrough busy. I want to see you guys in that challenge next week. I want you sharing this challenge with friends because accountability is really important. That challenge is all about helping you get organized and unstuck. It's helping you get out of that income plateau, right? You was in an income plateau. It's like when you've hit your level of income that you can make and you feel like you can't make any more, right? We fix that. We clean that up and you're going to get the strategies to do that next week so that you can make more money with multiple income streams. Multiple income streams gives you security, right? One-to-one -one services are not secure as your only income source. Um, the second thing is you guys, I have my unstoppable mastermind program. This is a six month program that takes you with high level support from me through my strategies for building a loyal audience, scaling your business with the multiple income streams and taking your business to the next level. Um, go to nicolelay.com slash mastermind. You can see the details you can see the price and book your spot call with me. We talk about it. We make sure it's a good fit. Um, there's limited spots available. We're getting started in just a few weeks. And this is truly something that is really, really a life-changing program. Um, and you can, you can have a level with one-to-one -one support, which the majority of the people sign up for. Um, 
it just really is going to help you have a strategy for your business. You have your blind spots. You've been missing things. If your business hasn't been growing as quickly as it wants to, as you want it to, or if you just don't want to have to figure it all out on your own, if you really want somebody who knows the tested and true strategies that work, um, that's me. And I want to talk to you about it. So hop on the list for that. Um, hop on the sales page for that, but sales page is up at nicoleboy.com slash mastermind and just grab, um, a call in my schedule so we can get you in before our spots fill up. It truly is an amazing opportunity. Um, and I'm excited to work with the women. Honestly, you guys can see all the testimonials from people there. Um, one woman took one income stream from $500 to $5,000 and it's now over $6,000. Um, another added $75,000 to her income last year, $75,000. So she doubled her income. So it's not like she had no money and then had a ton. She already was making the money and now she's making even more. Many of the women surpassed six figures, um, you know, on their way to multiple six figures if they're not there yet. This is truly, you know, a really life-changing program. I'm so proud of it. And I've been in a lot of masterminds and I've also had friends in a lot of masterminds. And I'm going to be honest, there aren't many where you get the hands-on support from me, from um, the leader of the program. A lot of the programs that you join, they're not in there. I'm in there pretty much every day with you guys in the Facebook group on calls with you, um, going through all of that. So, you know, this is really something that you want to be a part of. All right, everyone have a great day. And I look forward to seeing you in the challenge next week. And I'll hop on a call for you about the mastermind. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.